you got something in your hands that you're reading along with us, a Bible, a mobile device, whatever, just lift it up. Just lift it up. Whatever you're going to be looking at uh, in the Word of God today, lift it up. Repeat after me. This is the Word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, I'm changed. I'm changed. Amen. Luke 1, verse number 45. I want you to read it with me. For those of you who have your Bible, let's read it like it's the Word of God. Let's declare it, decree it out of our mouths like it's God's Word. It's not just a story, but it's the Word, the Word of God. Let's read together. And blessed is she that believed. Let's say that part one more time. And blessed is she. One more time. And blessed is she that believed. The rest of that verse goes on to say, For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I'm going to say it again. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. This is critical uh, that we wrap our minds around that passage. It's not just what God said. It's what we believed. It's not just what you heard. It's what you believed. If God spoke it, the Bible said there's going to be a performance. And if there's going to be a performance, then that means that all I have to do is position myself properly so that when performance time comes, I can get in what God is performing. He's going to do something in my life. There's going to be a performance. I believe most of us in this room are good people. Let me see the hands of the good people. All right, thank you. I think you agree with me. Look at somebody and tell them I'm a pretty good person. Come on, don't be ashamed. Tell the truth. Look at your neighbor and tell them I'm a pretty good person. But I want you to understand something that you being pretty good doesn't mean you're going to see a performance. The performance is only coming to them that believe. Now here's how we know you believe. When you believe what God said about you, you got to pursue it. You have to pursue it. If God said, this is what I'm doing, this is who you are, you have to pursue that word in your life. But look at what Romans 12 said. He says, Paul writing to the church at Rome, he says very clearly, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. So literally, the blessing manifesting in my life is going to prove to everybody looking at me what the will of God is. In other words, the blessing is supposed to come out of your life and manifest in such a way that people looking at you see the blessing of the Lord. We got to go to boot camp, and you got to understand why boot camp. We go to boot camp because God wants to break you from every former pattern. Anybody here know anything about the military at all? Let me see your hands. Y'all know a little bit about Anybody here ever heard of boot camp? Thank you. So you've got a frame to reference this to. Let's listen to boot camp. Boot camp is the moment you get on the bus, the plane, the train, and you arrive. Let's say in Marines is Paris Island, South Carolina. You arrive at Paris Island. Listen. From that moment, they began convincing you that you don't belong to who you thought you belonged to. They began to tear down every way in which you've operated before that moment. They tell you when to get up. They tell you when to go to sleep. They tell you when to eat. They tell you what you're going to eat, what to wear. They cut your hair. They do whatever they intend to do to show you that your former life is no longer existent. This is the new you. Now, if you can survive basic training, which is intense, 
If you can survive basic training, you become a soldier. If you can survive basic training, you get your assignment. But the problem a lot of times is that in the kingdom, we have not submitted ourselves to the intense work necessary to renew our minds. We come to Christ with baggage. Come on, somebody look at your neighbor and tell them that. You came to Christ with some baggage. You came here with some stuff from your family. You came here with some stuff you picked up on your own. But you brought all that stuff right with you when you come to Christ. Now he said, I'm going to cause a performance to be in your life of every word I spoke to you. But you have to renew your mind because the baggage that you brought with you is going to interfere with what I'm trying to bring through you. If you come to the kingdom poor, but you accept the upgrade, Poverty is going to be eradicated from your life. But if you come to the kingdom poor and don't renew your mind, this passage doesn't apply. I got to do my part. Elbow somebody and tell them you got to do your part. Oh, you didn't elbow them real good. Give them a nice elbow and tell them you have to do your part. Oh, yeah. Blessed. Blessed. Blessed, he said. Blessed. For yours is the kingdom. Drop down to verse number 24. All right. You're blessed just because you get the kingdom. But verse 24 says, But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Now, who's he talking about? He's not talking about people, that he, every rich person. He's speaking about people who you have taken advantage of people to get your riches. People who've used the world system to get it. He says, Woe to you because you've got your consolation. In other words, when the Bible uses the word woe, he says that what looks like it's this way is going to be turned. It's not going to end up what it looks like. So you see people partying and celebrating, and meanwhile they're taking advantage of people and stuff like that. The party is going to end, he said. Verse 25, woe unto you that are full, you're going to be hungry. Woe unto you that are laughing now, you're going to mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. He said, there's a woe coming into the land. It's got to come. The woe has to come. And the woe is coming to the people who have used the system to get their wealth. But for those who use the blessing, there's not a woe coming to you. Something else is coming. I've been cussed out and told off several times this week. Several, all in one week. And I knew it was the Lord because it's just people, the people didn't get together and decide to do it. And he knew I'd be preaching this today and he let these folk cuss me out. I, when I say cuss, I'm not talking about they said Jesus and I wish and blank. No, they cussed me out this week. Several times I've been cussed out, called out my name, called names I ain't never been called. And these wasn't by sinners, these is by church folk. And, and so the Lord said, I, I want you to do good when folk cussing you out. And I know you didn't feel like that. Look at your neighbor and say, your day is coming. What do you do when people cuss at you? Huh? Huh? I'm talking about operating in the blessing. What do you do when people curse at you? Do you curse back? I can't afford to. Now, I ain't going to tell you I haven't heard some words in my head. But I can't utter those words out of my mouth. You know why? I'm working on something. And what I'm working on is too important to be deterred by your moment. Somebody better hear God today. I, I, I said, look at your neighbor, tell him, I'm working on something. Come on, say it again. I'm working on something. And sometimes God lets some stuff come through that upset you, but you can't let what comes through that even if it upsets you, you got to pause a minute, gather yourself, and realize I'm working on something and I can't afford to miss it. Why? Because if I miss this, I got to wait on the next opportunity. Oh, all you got to do is just get up tomorrow with your mind made up that I'm not accepting what I've been living.
I'm not accepting what it has been like so far. I don't care how long it's been that way. If you make up your mind, not your neighbor, but if you make up your mind that I'm coming out of the yoke of poverty, I'm coming out of the yoke of sickness and pain, and I'm going to put my foot on the neck of shame and on the neck of harm and trouble and all these other yokes, I'm going to get in God's presence because the anointing of God destroys the yoke. If I make up my mind that I'm going to ask for blessing and enlargement of territory in spite of what I'm dealing with, if I make up my mind that I'm going to get in God's face in spite of what it looks like, in spite of what it even feels like, if I make up my mind, I'm going to pursue God. Not that I'm going to ask you to help me but I'm going for God myself this time. I'm going to get in God's face myself. I'm going to sacrifice my own time for God. See, we don't mind calling people at 2 o'clock in the morning for prayer, but I want you to get up at 2 o'clock and go to God yourself. See, when you really want something real bad, you ain't got time to dial some phone number because, honey, I don't need you to pray this time. This is a, something that I want. Here's why. Because most people pray what they sense from God. It is hard for me to sense the seriousness of your request. But when you know what you really want from God, you sense the seriousness. And it's time for you young, old, middle-aged to get in God's face and tell him, I've had enough of this. I want better. Somebody open your mouth and shout it out. I want better. And, and, and listen, ain't going to be enough of people praying for you. I got to get this before God myself. And I got to talk to God my own self. And I got to be the one. Jabez didn't wait for his mama to get a revelation. Jabez said, I'm going to God my own.